صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيت التيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد One of the most gravest sins that we can commit is backbiting. Now, the reason why I've planned a series of lectures on backbiting is that I myself never knew how serious it was until I researched into it. I mean, we hear it's a sin, yeah, we know it's bad, but we don't actually know how bad it is and what punishment we will be getting for committing such a sin. For the first lecture I've planned to speak about backbiting and in what forms can backbiting occur and why do we backbite in the first place? What's the reasons for our backbiting? In the second lecture I've planned to touch on a few Qur'anic ayahs regarding backbiting and see what Allah has to say about the matter and open these ayahs so that we can see that what is really meant behind the words said by Allah. And inshallah in the third lecture to see the outcome and results of such an action, such a sin. What happens to society? What happens to us? What are the results of this sin that Allah has warned us about so much in the Quran? Inshallah, we will take a look at the different forms of backbiting and why we backbite in the first place. Now, backbiting is regarded as a sin of the tongue, as we know it. When somebody says, don't backbite, we automatically think that they're speaking at the time. They're talking about something behind their back and that's why they call it backbiting. But that's not the case. Now, although mainly it does occur in the form of speaking, we see that the tongue can commit many, many other sins as well as just backbiting. It's useful for us to know this because we hear so often that one of the main reasons why we end up in so much trouble or we, we rake in so much sin for ourselves is that the tongue really does let loose sometimes with many, many different kinds of sins. Now, in the Du'a'i Makarim al-Akhlaq, Imam Zain al-Abidin salam he says that make everything he causes to pass over my tongue the indecent or ugly words, the maligning of good repute, the false witness, the speaking ill of an absent man of faith, or the reviling of one present, and all similar things. Now in this du'a, he's asking Allah to convert all these bad actions that the tongue commits into good ones, for instance, into praising Allah, into thanking Allah, into speaking about Allah, into remembrance of Allah, and so on and so forth. Um, but we see from this very short few lines that already this the tongue has committed, or he mentions the tongue's sin as to six or seven different forms. But then he says, and all similar. In other words, there's many more just like this. Now, some speakers I've heard say there are 30 sins that the tongue can commit, and some have said there are 90 sins. How many sins the tongue can commit, I don't know. I can't put a figure on it. However, we know that it's more than those mentioned by Imam Zayn al Abidin in Alayhi Salam in Du'a'i Makarm Akhlaq. Now, we automatically think, as I said before, that backbiting is a sin of the tongue that we have to speak in order to backbite. However, this is not the case. It may so be that you are emailing someone and you backbite, or you text someone, or you write a letter to someone. So backbiting doesn't just occur in the spoken form, but it can also occur in the written form. Now, it may be that you neither speak about someone nor write about them, but you may perform an action behind their back regarding that person. For instance, you've just sat with a few friends or something and somebody comes over to say something and once they leave or they turn their back to walk off, you begin to do this to your friend. This itself is a form of backbiting. Now, I haven't said anything, I haven't written anything, but my actions show what I'm thinking and what I'm saying. 
They say that actions can speak louder than a million words. Well, here it's the case where my actions, I'm saying that that person just leave him, he's mad. This is what I'm saying, but I've not spoken and I've not written it. So we see that actions can also be a form of backbiting. Now, sometimes you don't say anything about a person, but you may say, for instance, somebody comes to speak to you about somebody, and you say, you know what, it's better I don't say anything. It's better I don't say anything. This itself is a form of agreeing with that person's views. Now, that person may not have said anything, but they've said, oh, you know what happened today with me and, for instance, Ahmad or me and Ali, and the person says, you know what, it's better I don't say anything. Because they themselves may have had a run-in with Ali or Ahmad, or they themselves may have seen something wrong or had a bad encounter with them that they say, you know what, just leave it, don't even, don't even tell me about them. As in, I know how bad they are, don't even tell me about them. So if that person really wants to say it's better I don't say anything, maybe it was better they really didn't say anything. You know, as in, not even to say it's better I don't say anything. Maybe they should just keep silent, full stop, or just change the subject, for that matter. So you see that sometimes, by not saying something, it's also a form of backbiting. Now, it may have happened that you've walked up to somebody and you've spoken about them, or somebody's come to you, uh, you may have seen it in the streets, I don't know, or in, in majlises, hopefully not in a majlis, but um, that you see two people speaking about somebody and the second person who's listening says, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Now you would think that Allah is sitting there happy writing sawab for this person, rewarding them for the fact that they've remembered Allah, they've glorified Allah, subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, but that's not the case. Because their intention behind these words, despite them being good words, despite them being words of reward, words of glorifying Allah, because they are used in a wrong form, in the wrong intention, this person gets sin for it. It's as if they've backbited. It's as if they've agreed to what that person is saying about the third person. It says, Allah Akbar, I know exactly what you're saying. This Allah Akbar means, or this La Ilaha Allah means, I know exactly what you're saying. You know, I've dealt with that too. Now, why do we backbite? What are the reasons for backbiting? There are several reasons. I've put down six reasons that came to my head for why we backbite about people. The first one is anger. Now, sometimes you have a run-in with someone and you're angry at the time. You've got a fire in your heart that you really want to put out. So what do you do? Because it's burning your body up, you have to go and speak about it, you have to get it off your shoulders. But in actual fact, by doing this, by reliving what had just happened, by mentioning it again, by bringing it to your tongue, you are psychologically putting more pressure on yourself than taking pressure off. You're remembering what happened. So if anything, this is stressing you out even more, rather than just leaving it and forgetting about it. It's better I don't talk about it, rather than I talk about it and I keep remembering what happened. So some people think that by talking about it, they are actually putting out the fire in their heart, but in actual fact they are increasing the fire, they're adding more fuel to the fire. The second reason is envy. Sometimes we have people speaking about somebody in a good way. They may be mentioning a good characteristic or something that somebody once said to them or helped them out with something, and because the person present doesn't want to hear other people speaking good about them, they envy that characteristic or action, they begin to put them down. They begin to fight that good words with bad words. You may see it like this, where somebody's speaking about somebody else in a good way and they say, oh well, you know, that's, that's not what I've seen. That's not what I've encountered. Or, you know, I've, I've, I've seen differently. Sometimes they do it in such a way that they're trying to camouflage it, but Behind this action, behind these words, is the fact that they're saying, you know what, don't speak about that person, they're not good, they're bad, I'm good, I'm good. This is what they're trying to, to say, in actual fact. Now, the third reason is boredom. You may be in a meeting, you may be sat with friends or travelling somewhere, and there's not much to talk about. There's a lack of conversation, so due to this lack of conversation, you feel like you have to bring something up. So. 
I mentioned someone, I mentioned something that happened with someone during the day, or I mentioned something that happened in the past, and I start talking about that person, and this, in a way, is backbiting, it's, it's backbiting about them, but then it's inviting other people to also backbite. So, due to lack of conversation, due to loose, useless words, I feel like I have to say something, I have to make my presence known. So I start to talk about somebody or an encounter that I've had with someone in the past. The fourth reason is that we want to bring ourselves up in the eyes of people. Now, because we've got nothing to bring ourselves up with, we lack good morals, we lack the good ethics and so on, we think the best way to bring ourselves up is to bring other people down. So we start to bring them down and climb on their shoulders and heads, saying that I'm better than them, you know, they're, they lack, they do this, they do that. So we speak about them badly in order, in order to bring ourselves up. When in actual fact, status is something absolute, it's not something relative. Status is, your status with Allah is separate from other people's status. It's not like a, a, a bar chart where if you bring one down then the other one increases. No, it's an optical illusion for us. We feel that by bringing someone down, we are in fact increasing our status, but it's not the case. By bringing them down, we are actually dragging ourselves down, and if anything, taking them up, because Allah will make sure that if you speak about someone behind their back, the truth will come out. Whether today, tomorrow, or in 10 years' time, the truth will come out. So in actual fact, when you backbite about someone trying to take them down and bring yourself up, you're doing the opposite. Now, the fifth is... Feeling sorry for someone. Sometimes you say, oh, did you see what happened to that person? Oh, what a shame, you know, they should have married another person, for instance. It could be anything else, you know. It might be, I don't know, I can't think of anything at the moment, but the fact that you talk about somebody behind their back about their life, you're feeling sorry for them, you're saying, oh, you know, did you see what happened to them? I, I wish it happened like this, right? I, I hope the best for them. Now, you, you may not have ill intention or an ill feeling towards that person that you're mentioning it in this way. You're, you're genuinely feeling sorry for them. But that doesn't make it okay. You're still speaking about them behind their back. You're still mentioning something that they may not want you to mention to other people. So, by doing that, you're actually sinning. You're not doing anything good. If, if you really did feel sorry for that person, or you did wish them well, then the best thing to do in this case would be to remain silent and to ask Allah to help them, or to guide them, or to, you know, do whatever to them, to help them out in their situation. Not to go and speak about it to other people, and in a way give them ammunition to fire back at that person. This is all backbiting, this is what backbiting will bring about. And the sixth reason is that we do it to feel accepted, to... Maybe we're in a group of friends at the time and people are speaking about somebody, and in order not to lag behind, in order to show ourselves that, oh yes, I have an opinion too, you speak about them behind their back as well. You add something to conversation, you add fire, you add fuel to the fire. So. This is another reason why we backbite, to make sure that our presence is known, to give an opinion, to feel part of the group. It may also be peer pressure. Somebody says something about somebody, a third person, and then they turn to you and they say, what do you think? Don't you think that's right? Haven't you seen that? And due to the peer pressure, due to the fact that if you think, you think that if you say, no, I haven't seen that, actually I've seen the opposite, I've seen that they've you know, helped me out in situations. If you were to say this, you'd feel that everyone would turn on you, or your status would decrease in their eyes. So you add to it, you say, yeah, yeah, you know, I've seen that too. You know, that's what I heard as well. Um, so it's peer pressure that can also cause one to backbite. And there may be several other reasons why we backbite. I've just mentioned these six, but it's enough for us to realise that there are many different ways and reasons why we backbite and, again, different ways how we can backbite. So, I ask Allah that, inshallah, He helps us to become more aware and that we think before we speak or act, um, especially if it's regarding other people. We should try to remember that 
you know, if it's not about ourselves, then it's not our business. We should strictly try to remember that we should only speak about our own business, not dragging other people's names into it. One way I used to find very um, a good reminder or easy to remember is that if I felt that I would, I would remind myself that if you're going to mention somebody else's name in your sentence, then it's 99% of the time backbiting, so don't mention it. And I try not to mention other people in my sentence. If I did mention them, I'd say, oh, I was out with a friend today. I wouldn't mention who. So by doing this, by not mentioning names or not giving away clues or avoiding just general chit chat, you can probably erase 90% of backbiting that we commit on a daily basis. I ask Allah that inshallah we are made aware, more aware of this and that we do try to eradicate this sin from the many sins that we commit because it is, as we will come to see in the next lecture regarding the eyes of the Qur'an and what Allah says about backbiting, it is a very, very dangerous sin that has very many results, detrimental results to us and to others around us.